Okay, so welcome to uh, part six, uh, sorry, part seven uh, in our discussion of expectation values. And in this video, we're going to calculate expectation value uh, for a uh, hypergeometric distribution. Uh, expectation value for hypergeometric distribution. Now, uh, the way to do this problem is uh, to construct to construct the random variable uh, mapping our probability space onto the onto the hypergeometric distribution as the sum of lots of other um, pro uh, other random variables which map our uh, probability space onto Bernoulli spaces, uh, and then it becomes a lot lot simpler. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So remember, uh, and then we can uh, just apply linearity uh, to say that the expected value of uh, the hypergeometric distribution is just the expected value of all these Bernoulli's added up, and we know what the expectati expectation value of Bernoulli's is. Okay, uh, so let me just close the blind uh, so that uh, the sun doesn't reflect off the paper too badly. Okay, um, so, let's just have a recap of the hypergeometric distribution. So remember, uh, a probability space uh, that uh, has the uh, probability properties of the hypergeometric distribution uh, is, uh, well, it, it, it has a random variable which uh, is distributed uh, hypergeometrically, is um, consider the problem that we have a, a, a bag, and in this bag we have, um, let's say, B, black marbles, and uh, we have uh, P, purple marbles, or pink marbles, P, pink marbles. Uh, so we have these two colour marbles, and we're going to pick out K marbles in total. Pick out uh, K marbles. And so we can build a probability space, which is uh, this probability space here, which we'll call uh, sigma, uh, omega rather, uh, curly F, P, uh, where P is the probability measure, and um, this ca contains absolutely every outcome of picking K balls. Uh, so for now, uh, K marbles rather, K marbles. Uh, for now, uh, we're going to say the order matters. So you pick your first ball, and you like, uh, let's say we've got a little sort of, uh, a little sort of, um, I don't know what to call it. Uh, an array of boxes, and you put your first ball in box 1, box 2, box 3, all the way up to box K. So order at the moment is being, is being, uh, is, does matter. So you might pull out a black marble first, you then might pull out another black marble. Uh, then you might pull out a pink marble, a pink marble, a pink marble, a pink marble. Uh, so that would be an outcome. So in here we'd write uh, B, B, uh, pink, pink, pink. Pink. And here K is clearly 6, uh, but K could be some arbitrary number. So we've got all of these possible outcomes. Okay, uh, so uh, we know that the hypergeometric distribution, which is what we're after, we'll call this uh, big X. Uh, this is a random variable, and it maps uh, this probability distribution onto uh, the number of... Um, uh, the number of pink marbles you have. So X is going to map a single outcome S and it's going to map it onto the number of pink marbles you picked out, of pinks you picked out. Uh, so it's going to map it onto, uh, it could be zero, there is an outcome, for instance, black, 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 and then two more blacks, uh, that will be mapped onto zero. Uh, but it could, on the other hand, go all the way up to K potentially, uh, providing, of course, that B and P are bigger than K, uh, i.e. you have more than K pink marbles in the bag in total. Uh, so you could have, oh dear, what am I doing? You could have pink, 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 like that, and uh, that will be mapped onto K. And basically you can split this up um, into events, which is how many pink marbles you pick out. So we could say e uh, event I is equal to how many marbles you pick out, how many uh, the sorry no is the event uh, that you pick out out uh, I marbles I pink marbles rather I pink marbles and uh, basically X is going to map E I onto it's going to map it onto I all outcomes in E I are going to be mapped onto I. Uh, so uh, that is the basic idea of the hypergeometric distribution. We know that uh, this probability space over here will be distributed uh, hypergeometrically. Um, okay, um, so um, 
Now let's ask what is the we want to ask what is the expectation value of x? I what's the expected value of pink marbles that you would uh, put out? What's the average value in some sense? Okay, uh, so the way that we do this, the way that we tackle this problem, as I hinted at the start, is that we're going to split it up into uh, we're going to make this the sum of loads of um, other random variables which are all distributed Bernoulli. Um, okay, so. Uh, let, let's make some new random variables, uh, so new random variables, and I'm going to draw the probability space out again. So this is the same old probability space up here, which we have uh, omega here, so we have, let me just put one possibility, black, black, pink, 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 back again. Okay, uh, so uh, now let's make some new random variables. Let's let x1 uh, map you onto, again, a Bernoulli distribution, uh, zero, oh well, a Bernoulli uh, p space, uh, which is 0 and 1, and it's going to map you onto 0 if your first ball, the first ball you pick out, is black. So it's going to, x1 is going to map s onto, uh, it's going to map it onto, um, it's going, well, it's going to map it onto either 0 or 1, and it will go onto 0, well, actually, I'll write it out like this, 0 and 1. It will go onto 0 if first ball is black, and 1 if the first ball is pink. Is pink. Okay, uh, so that's uh, our function. And we can ask, how is this distributed? So, uh, what's the probability that you pull out a black ball on your first, uh, a, black, um, a black marble on your first, um, on your first, uh, on your first pick? Uh, well, that's going to be uh, the number of black balls over the total number of balls, B plus P, and so the probability that you pick out a pink marble is uh, going to be p over b plus p. And those add, obviously add up to 1. And uh, we could say that x1 is distributed Bernoulli uh, p b plus p. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's a Bernoulli distribution. Uh, then we can rate, make another random variable. We can make another random variable. We can make, uh, let's draw the probability space again. This is uh, sigma omega. Uh, black, black, pink, pink, pink. And we've got another random variable here, x2, which again is going to map you onto 0, 1. And it's going to map you onto, um, it's going to map you onto 0 if the second ball, second pick, is black. And uh, the first pick, it's going to map you onto 1 if the second pick is a pink marble. Okay, uh, so there's another random variable, and we can ask, how is this one distributed? And people get confused here, because they start thinking, well, how do we work that out? What is the chance that the second ball is pink and the second ball is zero? Surely it depends on what on what your first pick was. Uh, so it's, gonna, it's not going to be the same as this. That's incorrect. The uh, probability that you pick out uh, that your uh, second choice is a pink remains p over b plus p, uh, and the probability that you um, pick out uh, a black ball remains b over b plus p. So these two are identically distributed, and I want to give you the argument for that uh, because it. It, it, uh, to me, at least, it wasn't actually that intuitive that this was the case. So, uh, remember what we are doing. We have this probability space over here, which contains all possible outcomes of uh, picking K marbles from our bag. So, how many different ways are there of picking K marbles out of this bag? Uh, well, uh, there are uh, B plus P marbles. So, you could put B plus B marbles in the first one. Uh, in the first one, you could put B plus B marbles in the second one. You could, uh, sorry, B plus B minus one marbles in the second one, and you can continue this on. So you could get B plus P all the way down to B plus P minus one, and it goes on down to uh, B plus P minus K minus one. Okay, so that's the number of ways of uh, picking K marbles uh, from uh, the bag. We want to know how many of those choices. Uh, would give you a, a pink marble in the second position. So, we now set, we're saying the second position is going to have a pink marble in it. How many uh, options are there? How many, um, 
how many uh, if outcomes are there that all have pink marbles in the second position? So the second position is now set, but how many things can go in the first position? Well, that's uh, B plus P minus 1 things, because you've taken that pink marble, so there are now B plus M P minus 1 things that can go in there. Then in the third position, there are uh, B plus P uh, minus 2 things, and it goes on all the way down to B plus P minus K minus 1 things. So uh, there are k minus 1 uh, spaces still to occupy. Uh, so you might think, well, why isn't this k minus 2? And the answer is that it started off at b plus p minus 1. So if you count up how many terms we've gone through there, we have k terms, which is the correct thing. Uh, well, we... Um, or maybe... Um, so um, this... If you count this through, sorry. If you count this through, we have k minus 1 terms, which is correct. Um, because this goes all the way down to minus um, minus uh, k uh, plus 1, uh, which is going to uh, take us 1 above uh, b plus p minus k, which is correct. Uh, so if this has k things, then this obviously has k minus 1 things in the term. Okay, uh, so this is the number of ways uh, that you can, uh, the number of outcomes which have a pink marble in the second position. Therefore, the probability Therefore, uh, probability of you having a pink marble in the second position... Oh, sorry, and I've made a mistake here. Um, how many different ways, how many different pink marbles were there that you could have put in that, uh, in that uh, second position? You could have put P there. So the probability that you get, uh, that you have a P in your second position is this divided by this, which is going to be P over B plus P. And that argument works the same whether or not you're in the first, second, third, fourth, or kth position. Uh, the probability that you have a pink marble in that position is P over B plus P, and the probability that you have a black marble is B over B plus P. Okay, so basically what you can do is you can continue defining random variables like this, and you can go all the way up to XK, uh, which is going to uh, map uh, S, an outcome, onto uh, 0 if uh, the kth marble is black, and 1 if the kth marble is pink. Uh, so, what we have is we have K identically distributed Bernoulli uh, distribution. So we could say that xi is distributed Bernoulli uh, p over uh, over b plus p. So we have all of these k distributions, uh, k well, k random variables, which are all distributed in this identical way. The problem is they are not independent, and the reason is that if you get a uh, pink marble on your first on your first uh, pick. That affects the probability that you get a pink marble on the second pick. So they cannot possibly uh, be independent because otherwise it would say that even if you got a pink marble on your first pick, the probability of getting a pink marble on the second pick would still be P over B plus P, and obviously it's not. Uh, so uh, they cannot be independent, but that doesn't matter uh, for our purposes because if we look at X1 plus X2 plus all the way up to X, uh, Xk, if we add them all up, that makes a new random variable, as I showed you, as I painstakingly went through the process of showing you that if you add two random variables, it makes another random variable. And um, by induction, you can then deduce that um, that if you add k random variables, you still get another random variable. So this is another random variable, and this is going to be equal to x because if you add, this is going to add up. Uh, the number of pink marbles you get, because if you get a black marble in the first position, you put on add on zero. If you get a pink marble in the first position, you put add on a one, and that's true for all the positions. So if you add up how many ones you overall get, that's going to tell you how many uh, pink marbles you overall picked, and uh, that there and that um, that um, that random variable that maps you onto how many pink marbles you have is what we called x earlier on. So x we know is distributed hypergeometrically. Uh, so uh, that's firstly the way that you can uh, understand the um, the um, hypergeometric distribution as the sum of k in this case non-independent um, identically distributed Bernoulli distributions. Remember the binomial distribution was the sum of uh, of uh, however many um, of an arbitrary number of um, identically distributed but 
also independent. It was the sum of IID um, Bernoulli distributions. So the hypergeometric and the binomial are very much so related. The hypergeometric is the one uh, is this sum where they're not independent. However, uh, that's uh, that doesn't bother us because uh, e of x uh, is equal to uh, the sum e of x1 plus e of x2 plus all the way up to e of xk, that formula, that linearity formula, did not require, in no point in that proof that we went through that time, did it require uh, the, um, the, two, the um, variables that you were adding, these random variables, uh, to, be, um, to be independent at no point. Uh, and all it required was that um, the original probability space had finitely many or countably infinitely many elements. And of course, we know that's true uh, because, um, because uh, the, it actually has finitely many. This probability space has finitely many elements in it. Uh, the number of elements was this, remember. Okay. Uh, so uh, we can add up the expectation values of these um, of these other random variables of these k random variables that we have now, uh, and uh, we know that the expectation value of a of a Bernoulli distribution, uh, which we can check very easily. So, for instance, x one. Um, remember, we had okay. Let me just go through this. X one was distributed uh, Bernoulli uh, Bernoulli. I missed up the end. Uh, p over b plus p. So you have two options, 0 and 1. So if we want to calculate e of x1, that's equal to the sum over every single value uh, that uh, x1 can take on. So I'll just put over all values that x1 can take on of uh, x uh, times the probability of uh, that x1 is equal to x. So it's equal to the 0 times the probability that you equal 0, which is b over uh, p plus b. Uh, plus 1 times the probability that you equal 1, which is p over b plus p. So this overall gives us that the expectation value of this uh, random variable is p over b plus p. So we therefore get that the expectation value of x is equal to uh, k times p over b plus p. And hopefully that should... Um, that should remind you very much of the binomial distribution uh, because the expected value in the binomial distribution was np, where n was the number of trials and p was the probability of success. In this case, p over b plus p is the probability of success and k is the number of trials. Uh, so that's uh, the expectation value for the hypergeometric distribution. k is how many balls you pick up, p is how many pink balls there were, uh, b is how many uh, black marbles there were, and p is the number of pink marbles there were. Okay, so I've obviously switched between marbles and balls continuously, uh, but I hope that hasn't confused you. Um, so that is how you calculate the expectation value of the hypergeometric distribution by viewing the hypergeometric distribution as this sum of uh, k non-independent but identically distributed uh, Bernoulli uh, distributions.